Google Cloud introduced some new capabilities in auto scaling, BigQuery additions, and compressed storage. And you're probably wondering how you can take advantage of them in order to save cost and maintain the pace of your innovation. Well, today you're in for a treat because I've invited our global consulting team who works with organizations across the world with massive deployments, exabyte scale data warehouses, petabyte scale migrations, and who have developed a method for BigQuery optimizations. In fact, I have workshops they're going to talk to you about today. We're going to cover three topics. We're going to cover the specific announce, their uniqueness, and how customers are taking advantage of them today. Timothy and Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Yeah, certainly. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, globally, data leaders across companies are seeing increasing data management and analytics costs due to a variety of reasons. Uh, some are due to increasing volume and variety of data. Uh, a lot of companies are looking to take advantage of advanced analytical capabilities, which increases the amount of data that they store in order to provide AI type capabilities to their users and to their customers. Um, they also see a lot of challenges around the democratization of data as, you know, they're opening up data to, you know, broader sets of their organization to drive more value out of it. And what's really changed is the dimension of cost while you're trying to innovate. Um, and that becoming, you know, prohibitive over time for, for many customers as they're trying to, you know, take on uh, more of these workloads and deliver new experiences to their end users and also their customers. So more people more use cases, more data, and also while you're trying to innovate, you got this pressure on cost. Now, we introduced some new capabilities around auto scaling, compressed storage, and additions. How do you see customers taking advantage of that uh, to save money while they continue to innovate? Yeah, definitely. I think BigQuery really differentiates in this space, given the flexibility to mix and match additions with the workloads that you have as an organization. With traditional vendors, you're typically selecting a tier of service based on the needs of your organization, even if every workload within your organization doesn't need that tier of service. But with BigQuery, you're able to do this mix and match so you can have your business critical workloads running on a tier of service which is appropriate for them but then for your standard sql workloads you're able to leverage a lower cost and lower tier for them such that you're not paying the same amount of price uh, for those workloads and then from you mentioned auto scaling auto scaling is something uh, that we've recently introduced where customers get to pay for what they use it's granular and it's flexible on a per second basis and it's able to um, as opposed to your traditional auto scaler with like where you have a cluster and you're spinning up new VMs, we're able to do um, uh, flexible auto scaling in which we're, we're able to allocate slots on a second level um, versus waiting for spin up compute times like 60 seconds for a new VM to, to, to spin up. And from high compression rates, you know, at Google, we have uh, had our own challenges with our own data processing over the years. If you can think about the amount of data that Google processes, it's massive in volume, right? And by the very nature of processing that amount of data, we've needed to make our own innovations in this space. And so uh, we introduced Capacitor, which is the format that we use internally. And then we've exposed that externally as the standard format for BigQuery. And that provides significant compression rates, uh, allowing customers to pay less cost for storing more data within BigQuery. So you talked about three components here, compressed storage, double digit compressed storage, which makes it effective for people to work with more data, auto scaling, which is the foundational element of additions, so customers now can get flexibility and reliability across all their workloads. When you think about uniqueness of the Google Data Cloud, what are some of the other themes that can transpire and are useful for customers? Yeah, great question. So one of the features that our customers love is idle slot sharing. Within uh, traditional warehousing solutions, you would have compute capacity that was spun up. And then regardless if workloads were using it or not, it would be existing there and costing you money. Now, with BigQuery, what's different is that idle capacity that may not be leveraged within a part of your organization is able to be seamlessly shared with the rest of your organization, which accelerates your organization's workload across the board. And because we make sub-second sub uh, decisions on where the capacity goes, we're able to seamlessly go back and forth when it's needed from the original people who had reserved it. 
And also, BigQuery slots are stateless. And so in traditional solutions, you would need to warm up a cache. Uh, and until that cache is warmed up, your queries are running slow. But because BigQuery has stateless compute capacity, when it's shifting the compute capacity around, it maintains the same performances and efficiency as before. And then finally, BigQuery scales fast, making decisions on a sub-second level. And so whenever capacity needs to be shifted from one point to another, that's something that happens in a moment of a second versus you know waiting for virtual VMs to spin up. This is great, Ryan, because you've talked about the uniqueness of Google here, the specifics of the new technology that's introduced here so people can take advantage of it. Now, let's talk about specific customer examples here. Uh, Timothy, you have built a method on how to help organizations uh, with cost saving scenarios, just like the one we defined earlier. Let's talk about an example here. What was going on with the customer? Thanks, Bruno. We work closely with one of our customers who migrated to BigQuery and were concerned about their cost post-migration. So what we did was we identified those high slot consuming query patterns and worked closely with their teams to optimize those query patterns. So for example, we were able to identify 20 plus such patterns, which we looked at closely and that we went after. And uh, we were able to help the customer to save hundreds of thousands of slot hours a day. And uh, you know, as a result of this exercise, the customer was actually able to save costs by reducing their commitment by thousands of slots, right? And as a result, you know, they were able to save millions of dollars based on this exercise that we were able to partner with them on. That's incredible. Now, as you work with other organizations, are you seeing patterns or, or maybe rules that people need to follow in order to fast track to cost savings? Sure, Bruno. We have partnered with customers to identify the top one or two problem areas to solve, which could have high impact in terms of cost saving. For example, by identifying the right clustering strategy for heavily used table, we were able to have a positive cascading effect on slot time across multiple reservations. Or for example, rewriting the way a query was generated by an application had significant impact across the board. We are also able to guide customers on how to use additions and the possible cost gains that can be achieved with the different options. By using a two-pronged approach of optimization and analysis, we were able to guide a customer on how to save with the correct additions offering. This would yield savings of hundreds of thousands of dollars per month on their critical reservation. In another instance, we were able to show that about half the slot time was incurred due to an anti-pattern. And so these are the things which get customers excited because they are not only able to use the power of BigQuery in terms of performance, but they're able to get the best value in terms of their investment. That's great, uh, Timothy. And then I'm going to drill down uh, on storage. I want to talk about workload management and, and compute optimization. So let's double click here. Like, Can you give me some best practices first for optimizing storage? Sure. So in terms of storage, uh, you know, BigQuery has long-term storage. Uh, provides a long-term storage option where you know the price is half that of active storage. So customers can use best practices like partitioning, which would enable them to reap the benefits of this long-term storage. In addition, we've already talked about compressed storage or physical byte storage as compared to uh, logical storage. And this is another area where customers can uh, get cost benefits from. In addition to that, what we do is we encourage customers to move their data, uh, or rather their cold data, for archival purposes to GCS. And again, that's where they can uh, get cost savings in terms of storage. But the data is there for querying because you can use Bigly to you know, query that data anytime you need to. And uh, you know, in terms of uh, backup and uh, you know, in terms of time travel, you can reduce the amount of time travel by taking snapshots of your data. And that in turn reduces your storage costs. You don't have to pay for the storage uh, when you take snapshots. And in case you need to you know, copy your data from production to staging or development, you know, what we recommend is use stable clones. Uh, again, you're not going to pay for the storage, uh, only just the delta. And so these are some, some ways in which customers can get better cost savings in terms of storage. So that's for optimizing storage. And what about workload management? Sure, Bruno. In terms of workload management, what we do is we emphasize that customers use separate billing projects for different workloads. This not only simplifies reporting, but it also enables customers to allocate and control expenditure across workloads. We also encourage customers to adopt different pricing models for different workloads and different use cases. So for example, we encourage customers to have separate reservations for compute intensive workloads and separate reservations for BI or 
more spiky workloads. In addition, we, we encourage customers to make sure that they set up baseline slots for critical reservations. And of course, use long-term commitments for sustained usage and for better cost returns. And of course, we always encourage customers to use idle slot sharing in order to get the maximum returns on their investment. Thanks, Timothy. This was great. You gave us 10 best practices here across optimizing storage and workload management. Uh, before we close, I want to talk about optimizing for compute cost and also what are some of the worst practices. So Ryan, what's your take on optimizing for compute costs? Yeah, definitely there's some best practices to follow for optimizing compute costs. The way that I would summarize it at a top level is minimizing the amount of data that you're scanning can minimize the amount of compute costs that you're incurring, right? So following table best practices such as partitioning and clustering can really help you process less data and make it less compute intensive. You could also leverage the information schema to identify compute intensive queries and optimize them by looking at the visual query plan within the Google Cloud Council. Um, in addition to that, um, some of the things I'd like to recommend my customers to do is to leverage required partition filters on their tables such that if I have an end user who doesn't know better and they just run a query without any uh, you know, date filters within that query, they don't scan the whole table because the required partition filter will present them with an error and say, hey, you missed requiring a particular filter for this table. Uh, please require you know, an as of date filter, so on and so forth, right? And that really helps uh, people who may not know any better when they're you know, querying the system for the first time to actually structure their queries in a way that makes them less cost intensive. Um, and then finally, some of BigQuery's newer features such as like BI Engine, where we can cache data in memory or materialized views where you can actually have a view which is materialized, you're not recomputing the same thing over and over again, can really, really reduce those compute costs. That's outstanding. So lots and lots of best practices. Of course, this wouldn't be a true data journey if we didn't talk about worst practices. What is the one thing everybody needs to avoid doing? Yeah, so the top thing that people need to avoid doing is not leveraging the partitioning and clustering features. If you just enable those two features, that's like the easy button. And that will you'll be so surprised at how immensely faster your workloads run on top of BigQuery. This is great, Ryan. Where can people go to find out more? Yeah, uh, you know, there's a ton of awesome resources in our public documentation around, you know, optimizing for cost. But you can also leverage YouTube where we have uh, query optimization videos, and you can learn more about how the query engine works and you know, optimize um, based on your learnings there. And then if you're looking to engage with subject matter experts in this area, feel free to reach out to our Google Cloud consulting team because we work with customers very regularly in helping them solve cost challenges so they get more value out of our platform. I hope people are going to take you up on all these resources and, and the BigQuery optimization workshops. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.